thank you for coming to my presentation and thank you uh, for the organizers for inviting me. I was looking forward to giving presentation finally in Slovak because at my work I have to speak English all the time. But you voted for English, so <laughs> it's my bad luck. I will give it in English. It's, it will be about the uh, sentiment, sentiment analysis of our customer comments. So let me briefly show you what I will be talking about. I will make a short intro introduction about me, the company and the project. Then I will show how to do sentiment analysis and show you some demo. And then I will present results and challenges. So about me, I would call myself as a curious and an adventurous uh, no, courageous adventure. So I like uh, new excitements and uh, I like uh, uh, adrenaline sports, uh, as you can see on the bottom line. I studied a lot abroad. I have some masters and PhD. I sta started with mathematics and I, then I moved through statistics and econometrics to economics. So I cover also social sciences. I did postdoc in Paris and then I moved back to Slovakia. I worked for five years uh, for the central bank of Slovakia, and then I was headhunted by a, a Swiss insurance company to work for them as a data scientist. And I have crazy hobbies like skydiving, scuba diving, skiing, hunting, and yoga, or even I like swimming in cold water. <laughs> <laughs> so the company, I work for Zurich Insurance, which is one of the biggest global groups uh, in the world. They have a uh, <coughs> com they have companies all over the world. The dark blue is where we are present and light blue is where we have some intermediary and uh, gray ones are where we are leaving the market and white is where we are not present but there are very few countries. So we cover almost 210 countries. Uh, it's a very old insurance company. Uh, it was founded more than 150 years ago employs 54,000 people and last year was a very successful year. We had a 4.5 billion US dollars business operating profit. So we, will, we are expecting pretty good bonuses this year. The project I'm working on uh, is related to so-called transactional net promoter system. It's a system that collects customer feedback. So we want to know how our customers are happy with our services. So after each event, we ask our customers, how did it go when our customers change the policy by additional policy or have an accident and have to handle claim? We ask them how they were satisfied and they rate us from zero to 10 because we asked them how likely would you recommend our company to your friends or relatives. So zero means absolutely no chance, 10 means 100% sure. And then we measure so-called net promoter score, which is a difference between proportion of promoters, those that gave us the high score, uh, detracted by the proportion of uh, detractors, those guys that are not happy. And this is a very important score. Our managers have it as a KPI, key performance indicator. They really want to keep the level of customer satisfaction pretty high. And I entered this project because I'm uh, uh, focusing um, or specializing at this time in uh, text mining. So last year I spent a lot by studying uh, various text mining techniques. And uh, because this uh, system collects lots of text data, I was asked to analyze them, to automate the analyze, analysis of this data and to be able to detect problems in the comments and propose corrective actions. So if, the, if we see that some customers struggle with uh, connecting to uh, call center, we know that we have problems on the phone line, there are not enough people, whatever, so we can propose corrective actions and keep our customers happy. And it's very important because uh, what, is, what we observe is that happy customers stay longer with our company and buy more products. So we collect more gross return premium from these customers. Therefore, keeping customers uh, happy is very important for our business and I think for any business. So uh, what's the goal of my uh, presentation? It is to identify satisfaction of our customers with, our pro with the service that we provide based on their comments. And I must say that I'm, I'm going to show you only text data without the score because uh, 
I got data from UK and they don't have any score 0 to 10, so I just have raw text data and I don't know whether the customer is happy or unhappy uh, in advance. I have to detect it from this comment. And I'm gonna, going to use so-called supervised machine learning because I have labeled data, labeled by a human, by some colleagues from UK. So I know the sentiment of these comments I, I'm, and I'm trying to build a model, classification model that can predict sentiment on new data. And I'm going to use uh, natural language processing methods, some vectorization, so-called bag of us representation, and then I play with selection of suitable classifiers, parameters, and features. Are you familiar with the uh, text analytics bag of us representation? There were some uh, presentation about it. So uh, it's basically I'm creating a word occurrence matrix on the lines. I have documents or comments, and columns are specific words. And then I just record whether the word occurs in the uh, comment or not. So it's a zero one matrix, or I can even record number of occurrences. And this matrix is very wide and quite sparse. There are many zeros. So uh, uh, I use these occurrences as uh, uh, explanatory variables in my prediction model. So as I mentioned, I have uh, data from UK uh, labeled my human, so I know the sentiment from this data. And I'm going to perform this analysis in Python using open source libraries, namely NLTK, which is Natural Language Toolkit. It was developed by three universities, professors from three uni universities, I guess US, Australia and Great Britain. And then I use scikit-learn to select proper classifier and do the sentiment uh, uh, analysis uh, classification, sentiment classification. Now I will go to demo. So let me switch. First, I will show you the data, but only very briefly because these data are confidential. So I cannot show you too much of this data. Uh, as you can see, one column uh, contains comments and the other sentiment. So some comments are long, some are short, some are middle size. This is the positive uh, comment we got. So you can see that the person is very happy with our stuff. Everything went fine. Some people are unhappy. I don't know, this guy says that he got courtesy car. His car was repaired after the accident, but he still did not get any letter from us telling him that the claim is settled down. So probably he's happy with the service, but he was expecting some letter he, he did not get. So there are also some ambiguities that we did well, but we forgot some letter. But at the end, I have just quite a short uh, sample. I can use this, yes, okay. Because this has only 317 observations. So this is a proof of concept that I finished recently. And I'm expecting uh, now a uh, big data set and uh, build a model that will be uh, implemented in the production. So these are the data I will use for the analysis. And I, uh, I will show you the code that I wrote. So it's not too long. I will run it. I already ran it once, but I will run it one, one more time to show you that it really works well. So as you can see, I use some packages. This open pixel is for opening, uh, reading data from a Excel sheet. Then I use some uh, libraries from scikit-learn, like metrics, splitting uh, sample into train sample and test sample. Then some packages for feature selection and pipeline. And natural language toolkit I use mainly for to, to extract or remove stop words from the comments. And then tokenized sentences, uh, use some stemming and lemmatization. Are you familiar with the uh, natural language processing, uh, what, what it uh, means? Uh, so basically what you need to do when you have a raw text, you have to remove some punctuation, non-alpha numeric uh, characters. Then you usually put it to lowercase. You split sentences into words. Then you extract the stem from the words or lemmas. Stem is just the basic... Uh, root of the word, while lemma is the basic form. So just to give you an example, uh, I run, oh sorry, I have a t-shirt that, 
it's from uh, for my kids uh, i run uh, and uh, the basic form is run he runs i can remove s i get basic form run so stammer can do it automatically but when i use past tense i ran stammer will keep the word ran it's not able to detect that ran is past tense of run for this, I need lemmatization to look up this word in a dictionary and find that the basic form of ran is run. So lemmatization is uh, more precise, but it takes much more time than stemming because stemming is automatic uh, removal of, uh, of the suffix, while lemmatization, uh, you have to look up each word in a dictionary. So I tried both and I figured out that uh, Lemmatization uh, indeed provided better results, even though it took much more time. So here I do some initi uh, initialization. I define stop words. Then I have a uh, function that can do part of speech tagging, so syntactic analysis uh, to, to determine which word is noun, adjective, adverb, verb, etc. This is important for lemmatization to find out whether, for example, the word meeting uh, is a noun or a verb. I'm meeting my friend or I'm meeting my friend at a meeting. So this meeting are two different, uh, has two different meanings. And then I load the data, as you can see. Now I can show you the results. Where did I start it here? So three, I load I 317 observations and I do NLP processing here. So how do I do it? I put uh, data to lowercase, then I remove punctuation using the package re, and here I do NLP of comments. So first I use a, a tokenizer to split comments into words, then I clean, remove stop words from these words. So what are stop words? These are very common words that have no meaning. Uh, for, for the analysis like I am, he is, a uh, of, the, and, etc. So these stop words, they just increase dimensionality of the problem, but uh, these words really have no, no, no added value, so it's really good to remove them. When I start, when I try to run this analysis with stop words, I had problems to converge. Uh, so these stop words, they just, is a mess you don't want to have in your model. So it's important to remove stop words. <coughs> Then I use the lemmatization, so part of speech tagging, and then lemma, and then I just save the comments to matrix A, and I go to classification. Here I split the, uh, the, se the set uh, sample into training set and testing set. Why do I do this? Because uh, you cannot, uh, it's a stupid uh, thing, uh, to, do, to, to, to build a model on one data and test it on the same data. What you want to do, you want to get a robust model that can uh, predict labels for unseen data. So when you split uh, sample into test data and train data, you build model on train data, but you test the model on test data, and these test data are new to the model. So this uh, guarantees that your model is robust and works well on unseen data. So I use a proportion for a 60 to 40. So 60% is my train sample and 40% test sample. There is a command in the Python to do that. And here I use all kinds of classifiers that I found in uh, scikit-learn. I really try all of them. If you see any, oh, I did not, uh, is, which is not on my list, just let me know. But I really try all of them. All of them that can work with uh, sparse matrices. There are a couple of them that require uh, dense matrices, but I did not use them because when you analyze text, you work with sparse matrices, uh, like word occurrence matrix is sparse. There are many zeros. So I try Adabus, the logistic regression, and then an A-base, um, nearest neighbors, neural nets, calibration methods, uh, support vector machine, or even decision trees. And here I run the classifier and I print the result, and here are the results. So you can see that some classifiers can split the train sample perfectly, like this is the precision, accuracy. With 100% accuracy, they can split train sample into positive and negative sentiment, but they don't do so well in a test sample. 
So this is what I said. Uh, I could, if I use the same data to to build my model and test my model, I could say, "Wow, my model is perfect, 100% accuracy." But it's important to test it on a new data from test sample, and here I achieve accuracy of 80%. And then I also use uh, fivefold cross validation. Uh, cross validation is that I split sample into f five equal parts, and I use one as a test sample and four remaining parts as a trained sample. So I build a model and predict uh, labels for this uh, one part. And then I use another part as a uh, test sample and uh, predict uh, based on the other pa four parts, etc. So and and I, then I uh, see how which accuracy I achieve. So basically cross-validation is how the sample can predict itself, but always using uh, remaining parts to predict, uh, build a model and predict uh, one part that is a test sample. It's important, uh, my sample is quite small and I think cross-validation is the best measure I should use. So when I compare all these uh, classifiers, I can see that the best one is nearly centroid. And this is something that surprised me because usually when you want to classify, when you want use text data for classification, usually the best classifier is linear support vector uh, meshing classifier. This is like rule of thumb that you should usually use this one. But as we can see, it does not perform as good as nearly centroid. Nearly centroid classifier is very simple. Are you familiar with it? Or I can briefly explain. When you have some points in a two-dimensional space and you want to uh, create a classifier, so you take uh, the central point of one group, central point of the other group, like central point mean, means the average of all coordinates, and then you draw the line between the two, and when the new observation falls, in which half that class you attribute. So it's very, very simple. It does not have to remember all the, the observations. It's much simpler than K nearest neighbor. And surprisingly, it, it works uh, the best uh, in my case. So I'm trying to further Im improve it. And here I'm using so-called grid search for the parameters. There is, however, one problem that uh, Neary centroid does not really have any parameters because it's a purely non-parametric model. So what I'm playing with, I'm just uh, trying to use different measures, not Euclidean, but Manhattan, that takes absolute values between co the distant, uh, differences in coordinates. Or I try to play with a range of n-gram, whether to use unique verse, unigram, only one word, or also combination of two neighboring words, and then uh, <coughs> stop words I already used. And also I'm trying to determine whether it's enough to record only occurrence of the word, like 0, 1, whether it occurs or not, or number of occurrences. So if the word occurs three times, I will have three in the occurrence matrix, not only one. And then using uh, inverse document, frequency, weights, uh, or different norms. And <coughs> I'm combining all these different settings and trying to find out whether my uh, classifier improves, whether I get better result. And as you can see, here are the, the optimal values. So it's really best to use Euclid Euclidean measure use binary representation, only unigrams are enough, L2 norm is good, <coughs> is good to use English stop words and also weights. But my performance does not increase too much. The only improvement I get compared to the previous one is in, uh, in uh, cross-validation accuracy. I get slightly, slight improvement 86.4% and now I have 86.8%. <coughs> so this is because, uh, as I mentioned, the uh, central uh, nearest centroid uh, has uh, no parameters. But uh, if I use, for example, uh, support vector meshing classifier by uh, finding the best uh, combination of parameters, I can significantly improve the performance of the classifier. So this is important to do, even though in my case uh, there was, uh, it was not very important because uh, this nearest centroid classifier 
does not have any pa parameters, as I, as I already said. So what I tried next to further improve the accuracy, I was trying to search for best uh, features. So what are the features? Features are the columns. You have these metrics with uh, each word and its accurate accuracies, occurrences, and not each word is important to be present in the in the model. Some words are more deterministic about the sentiment. Some are absolutely independent of the sentiment. So I use uh, two methods to search for best uh, features. The first one is uh, select uh, percentile. So I select top x percentile of uh, features that are the most correlated with the outcome. So I look at the occurrence of uh, the word, how it is correlated with the class, positive or negative sentiment. And then I record this uh, correlation and I sort it and take only the top. Uh, here I use 15%, top 15%. And I see that my performance improved a little bit. Now I have 87% accuracy in course validation. But then I found out that using chi-square test of independence and selecting k best features gives me much better model. So uh, chi-square test of independence measures how independent are features from the out, uh, outcome. And if I see that some occurrences of words are independent on the outcome, they are not worth to be included in the model. So I focus only on those features that are the most discriminative for the, the prediction of my sentiment. And I use uh, the first 300 uh, features. I don't remember now how many features I have, but it will be more, a couple of thousands, because there are a couple of thousands unique words in the, in the data. And I observed that uh, my precision jumped to 88%, which is pretty good precision. So then I'm doing finally uh, cross-validation uh, to see how this uh, pre precision, how high it is in each part of the sample when I cut it in five equal parts. And I see that there are some, uh, some differences. In some parts, the model predicts uh, very well, like 95%, in some parts only 80%. So uh, the mean accuracy is estimated with quite a high uh, standard error. Therefore, I do also th threefold validation because my sample is very small, so I have only 300 uh, observations. So cutting sample in five parts, you are left with 60 observations in one part, which is uh, quite a uh, few to build a robust model. When I uh, use threefold cross-validation, I get very similar uh, accuracy, so this is fine. And then I also calculate accuracy, precision, recall, and F-score. I'm not sure whether you are familiar with these uh, terms. Like accuracy is how precisely I can predict both positive and negative sentiment, while precision is how accurately I can predict negative sentiment. We are mainly interested in uh, negative comments because we want to detect unhappy customers. If customer is happy, fine, we are doing a good job, but if a customer is unhappy, we need to know why. So for us, it's important to detect negative sentiment. And we, I can do it with a pre precision of around 90%. And the recall is uh, from those that uh, express negative sentiment, how many can we detect by our model? And you can see that almost 95% per uh, can be detected by the model. And F-score is weighted uh, average between precision and recall. So this is the end of my demo. And now, now I will just summarize uh, the results. So I achieved quite a high accuracy in precision or in prediction of uh, sentiment mainly because I use advanced uh, natural language processing, lemmatization have developed to decrease the dimensionality of the, of the problem, to match uh, similar words together or the same word in different forms together. Then I experimented with various classifiers to really see which one works the best. Each data require different approach, different classifier. 
Then I use parameter grid search, but it did not improve much my precision because the nearest centroid has no parameters. And feature selection helped me to improve further uh, my precision. So it's important to do all three of these. So my best model has accuracy around 90%, as I already mentioned. And now I want to mention some challenges. So, so when you do sentiment analysis, you have uh, problems with uh, typos or abbreviations. So we have problem to match words with real words. Then some people use jargon, slang, dialect or vulgarism. So they use specific words that do not necessarily exist in vocabulary. Then uh, synonyms, collocations or idioms use different uh, words with different meanings. Then you have problems with name entities, how to distinguish uh, Apple, that is uh, over there, the computer, a company producing computers with the fruit. Then irony, sarcasm is very difficult because we humans sometimes have problems to understand sarcasm and not uh, computers. Then we have some problem with negation and intensification. If I say it was not terribly bad, is it positive or negative? It is probably positive, but I use three neg negative words to I express something positive. So computer is quite uh, confused with such sentences. And then many people on uh, social media use emoticons or symbols that are ignored after NLP. So if you want to uh, make better model, you should take them into account. And there are also, of course, also different uh, Various culture differences, like uh, Americans say awesome, but they give a low score to a film. And uh, I don't know, Swedish people say it was nothing special, but they give a, a full score because uh, they express emotions in a different way. Yeah, two minutes. So the last slide. Thank you for attention. And we are hiring IT specialists and data analysts. Let me know if you are interested. That's my email. Thank you very much for your attention. I'm ready for questions. Okay. So we have many questions here, but um, some of them have been already answered in, in your part with challenges. But here's one question. Uh, can you tell us how big is the production data set? production data set. So we collect this data in each country. So 200 countries collect feedback from our customers. Each country has uh, several thousands or hundreds of thousands clients. So this data set is huge. Uh, as far as I know from UK, we collect a couple of thousands comments each month. And over past uh, years, the data set can be pretty huge. Um, I don't know the exact number, but lots of comments in different various languages. So this is also a challenge that after uh, processing this uh, English data, I will start with Spanish data, French data, German data. And uh, I have to build my model that will be language independent. So you, so you answered two questions because the next question was, do you only analyze comments in a single language, English? No. So to analyze the comments in other language, I have to have a list of stop words in the language. Uh, I want to analyze, for example, in German, there are also stop words like do, beast, ich bin, in, der, die, das, whatever. These will be stop words that they must be removed. And then you have to have also stammer, a good stammer to extract the root of the word uh, because uh, uh, suffixes are different in, lang in each language so uh, you you have to have good stammer or lemmatizer and also a list of stop words in uh, the language to be able to process data in this language yeah. uh, another question what is the biggest difference between programming in slovakia and programming in switzerland <laughs> I never worked in Switzerland, so uh, I can't answer this question. But I lived a lot abroad and I returned just a couple of years ago to Slovakia. And I must say that uh, we are doing pretty well here in Slovakia. I have no more motivation to move out. I'm happy here. So I think many things change and uh, you can find very good job uh, even uh, here at home. You don't need to travel abroad to have a good job. Uh, the last question, do you use neural network for sentiment classification too? 
Uh, not yet, but I'd like to. I know that there are some new techniques in uh, deep learning, how to extract not only some uh, classes or sentiment from text, but also semantics, the meaning of words. And <coughs> there are quite complicated uh, approaches using uh, deep learning and neural nets. So I'm now learning these new approaches, but I'm not using them so far. So, thank you very much again. You can ask him anything during the the break. Now we have a break for nine minutes. So thank you, Tibor, again. Thank you very much. Bye.